Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at circular queues, which is another concept of implementing queues using arrays. So a circular queue uh, gets over one of the key problems of a queue, that when you get to the end of the tail, the end of the array in terms of the tail, then you're full in terms of the queue. So a circular queue is an idea to say, we can probably squeeze a few more elements in if we do it in this particular way. So what does a circular queue look like? A que circular queue is a queue where the array, the start and the end of the array are joined together in a circle. So here we go. Let's look at the picture for a second. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 all around the periphery of the array and then 7 is connected to the number 0 again. With two pointers, head is pointing to the zeroth element, the same as usual, and tail is pointing, in this case, the fourth element. Now the key with the circular array is, if I take elements away from the head, then I can keep adding them onto the tail. And when I get to, in this case, the seventh element of the array, which is the back of the array, if the zeroth element is free, I can write it into the zeroth element. So let's look at that in action. I can take an element away from the head, then I can add one to the tail. Then I can add another one to the tail, then in this case I can take another one away from the head, then I can add one to the tail. Now in a, in a normal queue, the, the queue would be full when we get to that point, because once you get to the back of the queue, which is number seven, the eighth element in this case, the queue is full. Whereas we can see that there's a couple of empty slots at the start of the array, 0 and 1. So if there was some way we could say, even though the queue is full, it looks like it's full, can we not add an element onto the 0th element and then the first element? And now the queue is really, really full because the head and the tail are pointing to right beside each other. So that's the concept we have to get in our head. We have to get into our head the idea that when we get to the back of the array, we can jump to the front of the array, providing the space available at the front of the array. And how can we tell the space available at the front of the array? If the pointer head is not pointing at zero, if head is pointing at two, that means slots zero and one are free to write values in. So it extends the life of the queue. So let's do a simulation. Here's head and tail. Head is pointing to zero, tail is pointing to three. If we add an element on, then tail is 4. If we add an element on, tail is 5. If we take an element out of the head, then head is now pointing to 1. If we take another element off the head, now head is pointing to 2. If we add an element to tail now, in the old situation, with a linear queue, that's it, we'd be full. Whereas with the circular queue, what happens next is if I try and add another element on to tail, it'll bring tail around to the zeroth element and write it in there and we could write an element into the first element as well. So that's the cool thing about a circular queue is it works exactly the same but we're just allowed to write values to locations that have been dequeued by the front of the queue or the head pointer. So let's have a look at how that works. If we delete from queue with space for another value at the front. If we add on tail, if we delete from Q, if we add on tail, and then we can write a value in exactly as before. So because there's a free slot there and another free slot, we can write values in. It extends the life of the queue, so to speak. So we've said it, so let's think about how that works. The tail in our case goes from four to five to six to zero to one to 2, to 3, to 4, to 5, to 6, to 0, to 1, to 2. So instead, we can't do tail as tail plus 1 anymore because what we want is a circular increment of 4, 5, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. So as long as the space at the front of the queue, when we get to the back, which is element number 6, if we add 1 on to 6, if that could bring us to the number zero. So instead of doing tail, tail plus one, if we could say tail is tail plus one, unless we're at value six, in which case 
change tail to be zero. So we could do that as an if statement, but there's a really quick way of doing it instead. We can do division remainder. What does that mean? If we divide tail by seven and find out what the remainder is, if tail is one and I divide one into seven, it doesn't go and gives remainder one. If tail is two and I divide seven into two, it doesn't go, it goes zero times plus remainder two. If tail is five and I divide seven into five, it goes no times plus remainder five. If tail is six, it goes no times plus remainder six. So this is just giving us one, two, three, four, five, six as usual. But if tail is seven, if I try and add one onto tail and do seven, seven and seven goes one time plus remainder what? Remainder zero. If it's eight, if I divide seven into eight, it goes once plus remainder one. If I divide, if tail is nine and I divide it, it goes once and our remainder is two. If I divide it into 10, it goes once and our remainder is three. So what I'm getting is, if I divide by seven and just look at the remainder, which is the percentage sign means division remainder, I can go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's exactly what I want. So here we have it. If we're only looking at the remainder when we divide seven into four, it's four. The remainder is five when it's five. The remainder is six when it's six. But the remainder is zero when I divide seven into seven. There's no remainder. Um, when I divide seven into eight, there is a remainder of one. So I've got my pattern of four, five, six, set, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, by just doing a division remainder by six, by seven, I beg your pardon. Or not even seven, by max size, really. Whatever the max size of the Q is, if I do division remainder of that by whatever values entail, I'm going to get this correct pattern 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Perfect. So then all we're going to do is look at how the methods are implemented. And they're almost exactly the same as the methods for a non-circular queue, except occasionally we're going to do division remainder by the max size. So how do we know if a queue is full? A queue is full if the head is equal to the tail plus 1. So look at our case there where the tail is one and the head is two. So if head is two and tail is one, if tail plus one is equal to head, perfect. If tail plus one is head, then we're, we're saying the queue is full because there's all the values in it. If, unfortunately, if tail is point, if head is pointing to zero and tail is pointing to seven, then that's going to catch us out. So the way we, we figure that out is we do head is equal to tail division remainder by seven or max size plus one. So that means if tail is seven, we'll get zero plus one and it'll give us one. So that's, that's a different way of looking at the same thing. As long as the head is equal to the tail plus one, the queue is full. Let's look at the code. It's two ways of doing it exactly as before. If head is equal to tail plus one, division remainder max size, then it is full, else it's not full, return the boolean full. Or just simply return head equals tail plus one, division remainder, max size. So it's very much like a linear queue. The only difference is we do this division remainder by max size. How do we know a queue is empty? Circular queue is the same as a linear queue. If the head is equal to the tail, if they're both pointing at the same value, then there's no values in the queue. Same, that's a linear queue, same principle. So we just say if we have a Boolean called empty, if head is equal to tail, then empty is true, else empty is false. Or we can just return whether head is equal to tail. If head is equal to tail, it'll be true, it's empty. If head is not equal to tail, it's false. Now let's look at how to add a value onto the queue. Where are we adding? We're adding onto the tail. If we want to add a value onto this queue here, we'd add it on after the number six, which in this case is the number seven, and we'd write it in there. If we want to add another value onto the queue, 81 in this case, goes into location zero. If we want to add another value on, it goes into location one, and then the queue is full. So adding a value, there's two things. We just check if 
it's full. If it's full, we can't add a value. If it's not full, then we add one to the tail and we write a value in, exactly as we'd imagine. And let's look at the code. Add one, add to q n, so what value we're adding in is n. If the q is full, then we just said the q is full. Otherwise, we add one to the tail and then we write into the array q at location tail the value n. We don't just add one to the tail though, we add one to the tail division remainder max size. So what that means is if I'm at location, let's at the end of the queue, let's say it's location seven. If I add one on, I don't want to write n, the value n into location eight. I want to add it into location zero. So if I'm dividing by seven, I'm going to get no remainder. So I'll, I'll write it into location zero. As long as there's a space for it, that'll work fine. How do I delete from the queue? Well, it's the same as before. The head of the queue in this case is at location zero and the value is 43. If I serve that value or take care of the head value, head gets one added onto it and that value 43 is written out. If I want to delete another value, head gets one added onto it and we write out the value. Exactly the same in an array. So what does it look like? If the queue is empty, I can't delete a value, so I just print out the queue is empty. Otherwise, I store whatever values point to at the head at the moment in a variable n, and then I add one onto head. If I get all the way around the queue, and head is now at seven, let's say, and I want to add one on, I want to bring that down to zero again. How do I clear the queue? As long as the head and tail are pointing to the same value, and let's say that value is zero, that's fine. Or a grant. So if we set them both to be, let's say, minus one, even, or zero, that's fine. Um, so we can say tail gets minus one, and then head gets tail. Perfect. We've cleared the queue. It's pointing at no location, the base value. We're done. So thanks very much. That's Circular Queues. We'll see you on the next episode.